So far, we've looked at purchasing an asset and then depreciating, which is allocating the cost of the asset over its useful life. But once the company has purchased and used the asset, eventually at some point the company will decide to dispose of the asset. There are several ways we can dispose of an asset. We can discard the asset, which means we just simply throw it away as having no value. We can sell the asset to another member or third party. We can exchange the asset for a new asset or a similar asset. Or we could donate uh, the asset to an organization or a charitable organization. We will only look at how to discard, sell, and exchange the asset. Donating is for a later term. But for now, let's look at discarding and selling the asset. So let's look at this example. On January 1st, 2010, Parker Company purchased an airplane for $1,300,000. The airplane has a useful life of 10 years and is expected to be worth $100,000 at the end of the 10 years. On March 31st, 2014, the company no longer needs the airplane and decides to dispose of it. Given the airplane's condition, it is de deemed to have no value and is discarded at the local recycle center. Record all entries for this asset from January 1, 2010 through the disposal of on March 31, 2014. Parker Company uses the straight line depreciation and records depreciation on December 31 of each year. All right, so we're supposed to do all entries from January 1st when we purchase the asset through the disposal of March 31st. So let's start with January 1st, 2010. Now on January 1st, 2010, we purchased the asset. Now it doesn't say on account, so we have to assume that we paid cash for this asset. So we need to go in and we're going to debit our asset. And in this case, I'm going to be specific. I'm actually going to create an airplane account. So I'm going to debit that airplane account for the purchase price of $1,300,000. That's increasing our assets on our books. Now, again, it doesn't say on account or it doesn't give any uh, signed a note type uh, of information. So we're assuming that our company paid cash for that plane. And our cash is going down, so we need to credit our cash. This is an asset exchange. We're exchanging one asset for another asset. All right. Now the plane sits there, and we're going to use the plane over time. So each year we need to allocate the cost of the plane to that year because it benefited us. And it has a useful life of 10 years. So as long as we hold the asset for each year for 10 years, we're going to actually depreciate it. Now this company uses straight line depreciation. So let's look at the formula for straight line depreciation. The formula for straight line depreciation is the cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation. And then you're going to divide that by the useful life in years. Okay, so what that equates to in this case is one million three hundred thousand minus a one hundred thousand dollar salvage value, and we're going to divide that by ten. And when you do that, you should get one hundred and twenty thousand dollars of annual depreciation. So every year we hold the asset, we're going to depreciate that asset for one hundred and twenty thousand. Remember, our company does adjusting entries on December 31st. So let's look. December 31st of 2010 rolls around. Do we need to do anything? Well, yes, we've used this plane for one entire year, so now we need to depreciate it. When we depreciate, we debit the depreciation expense account. And again, we've already calculated that since we held it for a full year to be 120000 and then the offset to that is always the accumulated depreciation for this asset. Now remember, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. It is um, on the balance sheet. It is netted with the airplane to give you what we call the book value. Remember, the book value is the cost of the asset minus its associated accumulated depreciation. All right, so that's it for 2010. Now, 2011, again, we're assuming that we've used the asset. The asset has generated revenues, so we need to uh, realize the expense of that in 2011. So at the end of 2011, guess what we need to do? The exact same thing, okay? So for every full year you own this asset, you're going to depreciate the asset for $120,000. And again, this is on the airplane, so accumulated depreciation, 120000 All right. Now, 
I'm going to sort of take a shortcut because I'm on a computer and it's easy to do. But remember, each year, so did we hold it for 2012? Absolutely. We held the asset all of 2012. We also held the asset for all of 2013. So we would do the exact same entry for each of those years. So, so far, this has been this asset's life. We purchased it in 2010. We've depreciated it for all of 2010, 11, 12, and 13. Now, 2014 rolls around. Now, here we have to be a little bit careful because it says on March 31st, 2014, we discarded this asset as having no value. That means we simply threw it away. We pitched it out, okay? So, <clears throat> on March 31st, we need to record all the entries to show how we would discard this asset, how we would get it off of our books, okay? Well, the first thing we need to do, remember, we only depreciate assets on December 31st. However, since we're discarding this on March 31st, the first thing we need to do is make sure our depreciation is updated through the disposal date. So December 31st, 2013, but we use the asset for January, February, and March. So notice there are three months of usage that we have not depreciated. So the first thing we need to do is we need to depreciate the asset. And to do that, we're going to take that $120,000 and we're going to multiply that by the number of months we used out of 12. Remember that $120,000 is per year. When 2014, we only held the asset for January, February, and all of March. So we only held it for three months. So you're going to prorate that 120000 for three months out of a possible 12. And when you do that, that gives us 30000 So the first thing I always need to make sure is, is my accumulated depreciation up to date? And if it's not, the first entry we must make before we can dispose of the asset is to actually bring that accumulated depreciation up to its anticipated amount. Okay? So 30000 All right. Now we are ready to dispose of this asset. And again, we're on March 31st, and we're getting rid of the asset. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, is there a gain or a loss? Now, to calculate gain or loss, the way we always do that is I always say, what do we receive? Now, in this case, what did we receive? Well, we received absolutely nothing for this asset because we're throwing it away. Does that make sense? We got absolutely no value of this asset because we simply took it to a graveyard and left it sitting there. All right? So you're going to take that, and from that, you're going to subtract the asset's book value. Now, what is our asset's book value in this case? Well, remember, Book value is calculated by taking the cost of the asset minus the accumulated depreciation. So let's look at that for just a moment. So if we take the cost of the asset, remember this asset cost us $1,300,000. And from that, we're going to subtract our accumulated depreciation. Well, what is our accumulated depreciation? Well, we have to go back and look. Notice we had four years of depreciation at 120,000. So you're going to take 120,000 four times. So 120,000 times four is 480. And then we've got this 30,000 sittings here. So we're going to do 480 plus the 30,000. So does everybody agree to date we should have 510,000 of accumulated depreciation on this asset? So if you take the 1,300,000, you subtract the accumulated depreciation of 510, you end up with a value on your books or a book value of 790,000. So we're going to take a receipt of zero. We're going to subtract 790,000 from that. And when we do that, that actually ends up giving us a negative... One hundred, or excuse me, a negative seven hundred and ninety thousand. If it's negative, that means we are taking a loss on this asset. Loss accounts act like expenses. They reduce our equity. Now, notice I didn't say they were expenses. They're, they're a little bit different, but they act like expenses. They reduce our owner's equity. So a loss account would be a debit account, just like an expense would be. Okay? So now that we know 
what our loss is, the next thing we need to do is record the asset's disposal. Now, remember, when you're disposing of an asset, you remove all traces of the asset from your books. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of that asset's accumulated depreciation. You no longer own the asset. You can no longer show the depreciation on the asset. Remember, our depreciation would have a credit balance of 510. So to get rid of it, we need to debit the account for 510. Now since debits need to go first, we know we have a loss, we need to record that loss as a debit. So loss on disposal. How much of a loss are we going to take? Well, we've already calculated the loss on this asset to be 790,000. So we need to put in that loss of 790. And then the last thing we need to do in this case is record the actual disposal of the airplane. And remember, this airplane is sitting on our books with a cost of 1,300,000. So again, we need to get rid of that asset account, so we need to credit the account for 1,300,000. And that is it. That's how we dispose of an asset. We figure out the asset's accumulated depreciation. We determine the book value of the asset. We figure out the gain or the loss, and then we simply record it. Alright, so that's an example if we throw away the asset. Now, we're probably, to be honest with you, not going to throw away an asset with a book value of 790000 However, I wanted to show how we would record that. When you throw away an asset, there's only two possibilities. You can either break even, which means your book value equals your cost, or you can take a loss. Now, let's look at what happens when we sell the asset. We've got a couple of examples here, so let's start with this first one. Now let's review the March 31st, 2014 entry with a different assumption. What journals would be required on March 31st, 2014 if the company sold the airplane for $850,000? Well, the first thing we've got to remember is, remember, as of December 31st, 2013, we did our last recording of depreciation. So the first thing you must always make sure of is that your depreciation is up to date. So on March 31st, we would have to record that additional accumulated depreciation on the airplane of 30000 Remember, we already figured that up in the last example. It was the 120 times the three months that we're using it for this year. So we need to go ahead and record that first and foremost. Now, we are ready to do the disposal of the asset. Here we go. Well, the first thing, remember, we need to figure out do we have a gain or loss. So the first thing we always do is take what we receive. What did we receive for this asset? Well, in this case, we're selling it, so we're actually receiving 850000 on this asset. Now, from that, we're going to subtract out the book value. Again, what's the book value? Well, book value of an asset is the asset's cost. 1,300,000 minus its accumulated depreciation. Remember, we've already figured up that we had 510,000 in accumulated depreciation, which left us a book value of 790,000. So if we take 850 minus 790, you end up with a positive 60,000, which indicates to us that we have a gain. So in this case, we're actually gaining on the disposal of this asset. Now, gain accounts at like revenues. I didn't say they were revenues, but they at like revenues. They increase equity, so we need to go in and credit that gain, so keep that in mind. All right, so let's look at disposing of this asset. Now, when we sell an asset, we have to ask ourselves, did we receive anything? And if so, we need to debit what we received. Well, we received cash in this asset, or in this instance. So our cash account is going to go up by the amount that we sold the asset for, and that was 850000 in cash that we received. Now, next thing we need to do, again, is remove all traces of this asset from our books. So the first thing we need to do is get rid of the accumulated depreciation on this asset. Okay, so we've got what we receive. We're getting rid of the accumulated depreciation, so we need to strip that accumulated depreciation out for 510000 Remove that from our books. Now, the next thing we need to know, 
do we have a gain or a loss? And in this case, we said we had a gain of 60,000. Gain accounts at like revenue, so therefore they are credit accounts. So we're going to credit gain on disposal, or you may see gain on sale, depending on your book and what you're learning here, how your teacher uh, formats it. And that was 60,000. And then the last thing we need to do, remember we have to strip all evidence of that airplane off our books. So we need to get rid of that airplane that was currently recorded at a cost of $1,300,000. All right, so that's an example of a self at eight hundred and fifty. Now let's look at another um, example here, the next one on our books. And this one is the exact same thing except we sold for seven ninety. dollars Well... I'm going to, again, uh, take a little bit of a shortcut because remember in this asset on March 31st, no matter what, we have to record that depreciation. Now, what would we do if we sold it for $790? Well, the entry would almost be the same except we need to figure out do we have a gain or loss. So what we receive, what did we receive for this asset when we got rid of it? We received 790000 And we subtract from that the book value. And again, our book value in this case was 790000 We've already figured that up. So that means that we have a zero, which means there is no gain or loss. We, in essence, break even on this transaction. So in order to record this, again, we always debit what we received, and in this case, we received cash, and we received cash of 790000 Now we need to get rid of the accumulated depreciation. We need to strip out any evidence of this asset from our books, completely remove it from our books. So we have to remove the airplane and its associated depreciation. We've already figured that to be 510 as of March 31st, so we can put that in. Now, do we have a gain or loss? Well, we have neither, so we do not need to record that. So we can simply go in and remove the airplane, and we have the airplane at 1,300,000. And if you've calculated everything properly, notice how we should be in balance. Debits must always equal credits. All right, one last example. I know you're probably tired of looking at these, but just another minute, hang in there with me. Let's look at this last one. Now, let's review it again. Again, let's assume that we sold the airplane for 740. Well, the first thing we always need to do is make sure that accumulated depreciation is up to date. We know that entry is for 30. Now, let's figure out gain or loss. What we receive. What did we receive for this asset? Well, in this case, we are receiving 740,000 in cash. Then we're going to take from that the book value of our asset. And our book value on this asset was 790. And when we subtract that out, we end up with a negative $50,000. Now that $50,000, it is negative. That means it is a loss. It is a loss because the book value is greater than what we received. All right, so let's record. One, we always have to record what we received. So we received cash in this case, and we received cash of $740,000. Now, once we receive the cash, the next thing we need to do is strip the accumulated depreciation off our books. We need to remove that from our books. So we're going to uh, debit our accumulated depreciation to get rid of it. And again, we know that to be 510000 Did we have a gain or a loss? That's the next step. Always record your gain or loss. Well, we have a loss. Loss accounts are debits, so loss on disposal. Or you may see loss on sale, depending on the textbook and the instructor. So loss on disposal here is going to be 50000 And then last but not least, we're going to go in and we need to remove the old asset off our books. The airplane is coming out. And remember, since we carry that at cost, we have to remove it at its original cost. All right, so that concludes how we discard or how we sell and how we record those transactions.